Hello and welcome back to the channel and in today's video we're going to be doing a bit of electrical inspection and answering a few of the key questions that we keep getting asked about that. Uh, so if you want to head over to the other side and we'll see you in the school. We've headed over to a school in Liverpool uh, today where we're carrying out a load of electrical inspections. Uh, we're carrying out PAT testing uh, or uh, portable appliance testing uh, and we're also carrying out uh, a fixed electrical inspection on the Demirac uh, which is more what we're going to talk about today. Uh, we've talked about the portable stuff before uh, but we get asked a lot of questions about the, uh, the fixed electrical and kind of what the requirements and what are the different tests and what are we looking for. Uh, so we thought we'd just do a quick video on that, uh, just to try and explain a few of the bits and pieces that we do. Uh, so behind me we've got a, a dimmer rack, uh, quite standard dimmer rack. It's a 88 um, chili rack, uh, 24 channels. Uh, the nice thing about this is it's one of the bypass racks. Uh, so sometimes we talk about dimmed power and hard power uh, and the difference between the two of those. So dimmed power is very much kind of for your traditional lighting, uh, where you've got a control desk uh, where you uh, control the intensity of the light uh, by uh, varying the voltage to the light uh, through a dimmer circuit. Um, a lot of the newer lights are intelligent and they require a constant power supply. Um, so that's what we deem as hard power. Uh, so this dimmer rack with the push of one of these buttons down here uh, allows you to change each individual channel from either a dimmed channel uh, or to a hard power channel, which means that the same power supply uh, can be used to supply your traditional kind of lighting, incandescent lights, uh, as well as your more intelligent lighting, uh, which requires that permanent power. So this is the close-up of the inside of the dimmer rack, the bit that you don't normally see. Uh, so we can see at the top uh, the big wires going into that main isolator. So that's the supply to our dimmer rack. Uh, and at the top, you can see all the wires, and there are all the circuits going out uh, to the final circuits that are on the lighting bars. Uh, so the way this demo rack works is the power comes in uh, through these into this main isolator. It then comes down to these RCDs, and we've got two in here, uh, which then splits out to go to these individual circuit breakers, which we've got 24 of, which then feed these switches, which are the switches I was talking about that allow us to change from dimmed power to hard power within the rack. Then at the bottom we've got a control panel that lets us set things like dimmer curves uh, and also the address um, because this is uh, controlled via DMX. Uh, so all that and various other features are set within that uh, control panel. So now within the actual studio uh, we can see the lighting bars. Uh, so this is a really good example. The lighting bar on the right hand side has got uh, lights that need fixed power on them. Uh, and the lighting bar on the left hand side, which we can just see around the side of the ladders, has got uh, a mixture of moving lights which need fixed power and standard incandescent lights that used standard dimmer power. Uh, so the wires that we saw coming out of the dimmer rack uh, to the individual circuits come into the end box on the end of this uh, lighting bar, or IWB, which is an internally wired lighting bar, and then run along the inside of the pole to each of the individual sockets. So when we're doing our testing, we're actually testing all the way to these individual sockets from the dimmer rack. So going back to our dimmer rack, there's a number of tests that we're going to carry out actually within here. Uh, and they're all sort of different safety tests. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but essentially we're, we're making sure that the most important thing uh, is that the earth path is, uh, is good. So if there's a fault on any of the circuits, then there's a good earth, which means that the power will automatically disconnect and hopefully you won't get a lethal electric shock. Um, there's two different devices within this uh, particular dimmer rack that help prevent that. Uh, so we have RCDs, which are these here, uh, and we have MCBs, which are these here. So the MCBs are your traditional circuit breaker. Uh, so that means that if you plug too many lights in uh, and it tries to pull too much current, then this will trip. Uh, and equally, if there's a fault on the, uh, on the bit of cable, um, which is causing it to pull too much current as well, then these will automatically trip. The second device that we have for safety is the RCD, uh, and this is an earth fault device. So this measures the amount of current that is flowing uh, to earth from the circuit. So in a healthy circuit, we should have all of the current going out of the line conductor and back through the neutral, and we shouldn't lose any. Uh, in an unhealthy circuit, then we might find that all of the current goes out of the line conductor, some of it will go to earth, and some of it will come back down neutral. 
so this device is designed to, de uh, to detect that. Uh, and if it detects more than 30 milliamps of current going to Earth, then it will turn, uh, turn the power off. Uh, so this is really good from a safety point of view and also from a fire point of view as well. Um, so they're the two different types and people do mix them up uh, quite a lot and don't really understand the difference. Uh, leave a comment if, you, if that doesn't explain it and I'll, uh, I'll try and jump on and explain it a little bit more to you. As I said there are a few different tests that we need to be able to do here. Uh, so we're going to check that there's a good earth to the dimmer rack. Um, so that's got the earth fault loop impedance. Uh, that makes sure that if there is a fault then the return path to earth is uh, of a low enough value that the main circuit breaker will trip uh, and turn the power off. Um, we also then do things like insulation resistance. So that's making sure that the, the physical insulation on the cables hasn't deteriorated. Um, and uh, various other tests as well uh, and to do the test we use a, uh, a tester obviously uh, we use what's called an MFT or a multifunction tester which if I grab ours uh, we use the flukes uh, in house uh, but this allows us to do a whole range of different tests um, within one box which is fantastic because it means you only need to ca uh, carry one meter uh, the only downside is if your meter goes wrong uh, then it means you can't do any testing at all um, luckily these are very reliable though um, so uh, we, we don't generally have any issues with that so then the other important bit is uh, the certification uh, because actually us doing all the inspections and what have you is brilliant but if you don't have the bit of paper then it's kind of uh, it's really difficult to make sure that what we've done is correct and if somebody uh, does have an accident or if you ever get an audit, then uh, you need to be able to prove that you have actually done uh, the inspections. Uh, so all our engineers have got laptops uh, and all our certification is done through those, uh, through an online portal, uh, which means that we can very quickly and easily create certificates. Uh, but it also means that we can send them for verification uh, from our QSs, uh, all within the same system. So an engineer can be working live on site and the QS can be back in the office and see the progress of a job uh, and also be able to uh, uh, check that as they go along as well uh, so some of the jobs that we do we've got many many distribution boards so it means that we can go through and as an engineer finishes testing a distribution board uh, then we can jump on as a QS and just make sure that the results uh, make sense and if there's any issues then they can uh, go straight back and, uh, and look at those before leaving site so that was a little bit of a whistle stop tour on the uh, electrical testing that we do for dimmer racks uh, the main thing that we find is that uh, schools uh, especially think that all the dimmers and final circuits have been tested uh, when their electricians have done the school's EICRs and uh, generally we find that they haven't um, because the electricians who come are specialists and they don't uh, they don't understand what happens in a dimmer uh, and you need to test them in a certain way otherwise you either damage them or you get some really odd results uh, which means that the electricians fail them because they don't understand uh, what's going on. Um, so as I say that was a bit of a whistle stop tour on, uh, on the electrical testing of the dimmers uh, if there's any questions or whatever do drop them in the comments and I will jump on there and try and answer them uh, but thanks for watching this video hopefully it's been informative if you do like it uh, please do like share uh, and follow us uh, for more info on what we're up to and some more uh, more videos like this see you on the next one